This is honestly the best money-making tool eBay has ever created. It's been around for, I guess, a decade. We've used it since its creation, and it's helped us make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that's no exaggeration. Hey, it's Don. Today I'm going to show you how to make the best, most effective sales campaign on eBay that you can. The sales and markdown aspect of eBay is honestly the best feature that we've ever used on eBay and it routinely helps us make thousands and thousands of dollars. Over our time on eBay, we've made hundreds of thousands of dollars because we use that tool specifically. That's no joke, that's no fantasy, that's not... Uh, hyperbolic, that's the facts of the matter. We've sold a lot of merchandise on eBay. We've been doing six digits for a very long time on eBay. And a lot of that money has come in due to us being able to market and mark down and price correctly so that we can maximize perceived value to make us the most money. There obviously are some steps, some things you need to do and to take into consideration when you're setting them up. You can't just turn it on and say, I'll just mark down my store, whoop de doo here we go, we're all done, everything's fine and I'll be making just great money. It doesn't work like that, it's just like doing a promoted listing. It doesn't work for some items, it doesn't work for vintage. We don't use promoted listings at all, but I sure as heck do sales and markdown and I don't have to give eBay an extra dime to do that. It's just playing around with how we price our items, how we market them, how we categorize them in eBay as well is a key essential aspect of doing promoted listings. We're gonna hop over now and I'm gonna show you step by step, walk you through the best features, how we set up ours right off the bat so you can do the same thing. Now we're on the marketing page here in my seller hub, which is where you do all of the markdown sales. We always have sales running all the time, pretty much every single minute of the day other than the time it takes to restart them when they end. We're going to go into those in just a second here, but to accurately, effectively run a sale on eBay, you also have to do something else before you even get to this step here. So we're now in my store category page. I'm in store. I'm in the manage store categories section here. One thing that I have to tell you that you need to do, in my personal opinion, from running sales since eBay had them at least a decade, is that you need to break up your items into the appropriate category. Categorize everything the way it should be categorized. We've split up everything, tied it together. So if it's aviation, for example, or an airline-related item, whether it's a label, a book, a brochure, a button, a uniform, a spoon, a china plate, it's all in aviation. So that anybody who collects that type of item is going to be able to find anything related to that. Advertising items are just strictly advertising. Buttons are button items that wouldn't be tied to something else. We've got a military section, so the military section has buttons in there as well as foreign items, uh, foreign military, post-Civil War, later items than that. We've got movie collectibles. Every section of our store is categorized specifically like that so that things that are all related are in the same category. Now, why would you want to spend the time to set this all up? Because every category has a different sell through rate. Every category has a different structure. Every category has different types of buyers, different valuing in, in the whole works. And that goes for every single thing you can think of out there. Whether you're a clothing seller, there's ladies' clothes, men's clothes, um, the types of clothes, formal or casual wear, whatever the case may be shoes, dress shoes, uh, sneakers, tennis shoes, whatever you want to call it. it. It's several different options. They all have different sell-through rates. They all have different types of buyers. Certain items will be better in certain times of the year. I do have a holiday section. So there's certain items that I would throw into that section specifically. Um, again, military goes in military. Uh, the transportation, I have steamship items, uh, railroad collectibles, railroad and train items. All of that stuff is tied separately that way. This way you can specifically target each one of these categories differently based on the needs of the specific item that you are selling. One routine, one set discount doesn't meet everybody's needs at all, and I would never recommend using that route. 
we've always tried to run at least in the last few years and do tests and see which works best for us and breaking them down works best some items i may need to discount because of their younger buyers and the economy isn't great or whatever the case may be like comic books or something and i may have to run a bigger discount than i would on something else some items we corner the market in and i've got seventeen thousand items in one category and with those sorts of categories i don't have to discount them that much i wouldn't dis want to discount them the same way some you discount on certain days many items i don't discount at all because of various factors so keep that in mind make sure that you can put them together so that if somebody's looking at an item in your store they're looking at everything tied to it so don't just think, hey, I've got a postcard with the train image on it. I've got a book with the train on it. So I'm going to put the book in the book category, the train postcard in the postcard category, uh, a uniform in the collectibles category. No, put them all together because they're all train-related items. Whoever would be most interested in that. The only difference may be some cross-category interest items, which are always good, but there's usually a key category I would put them in. Another thing I do not ever do is use two different store categories for the same item. I only use one category for each item, and that is it. I don't do, you know, second category at all. The same thing with eBay's category specifics. I never do a second eBay category ever. It costs you for one, and it's usually not effective. Usually I try to list multiple items at the same time. They're all, you know, in the same category, the same type of items. I may list half in one category and half in another if they're tied similar categories. Again, depending on the specific item itself. So just some thoughts to think about before you run a sale. I can tell you, though, without a doubt, sales-wise, give me the biggest boost. I've done promoted listings in the past. I will never do them again. We tested them a year or two ago when everybody was saying, yeah, they work great. We actually lost sales when I turned off my sales, lost actual revenue when I turned off my sales and markdown and instead went to promoted listings. And I promoted into the double digits. I wasn't cheap about it. I didn't do the bare bones minimum. I did 10, 11, 12, even up to 14% on some items. We did four or 5,000 items at the end of the day with a discount and then compared them to ones that weren't discounted and the results were just terrible. Maybe it was even 8,000. It was a large chunk, thousands of listings. So for us, it wasn't good, but this always works. We sell different types of items than most people though. I sell vintage and collectibles and a sale is almost always the best bet. A high price with the bin, buy it now, and best offer is always what we do on 99.9% .9 of every one of our listings. The best option in here, the best feature that I personally would recommend and use, and I've tried all the features. I've done promotions, marked on sales, done mess with the buyer groups. I don't do social because I don't push my items on people who, who are friends and family because I'm not trying to get money from my friends and family. And I don't push it on viewers, so I don't even advertise my store to viewers because I'm not trying to push them buying my stuff. I'm trying to show how to do stuff. Chances are the average person who's watching a video of mine or something is not going to need an 1870s Christmas card for 50 bucks. Now, the one that works best for me is going under the markdown sales here. And these are the ones that I've got. These are ones that are currently active that I have running. Items under 10 bucks I do not mark down at all 99% of the time. There's many other items that I do not mark down. Let's run one right now. Let's run a sale. We're going to create a promotion, and we're going to do a sales event in Markdown. This is the number one one that I recommend for pretty much most people out there. Now, with clothing or something in a flooded category, you will probably have to do promoted listings. If you're not selling flooded items, you're not going to probably have to worry about that, especially vintage. For me to sell something, it just takes the right person seeing my listing. It doesn't usually matter at all whether you know there's a competition because almost everything that I have up there may only be one or two other people selling it, if anybody selling the same types of items. But let's hop over and create a sales and markdown. Now, you can choose the discount amount. eBay recommends one. There are some that you can take so much off each item, or you can offer you know free shipping for all discounted items. I don't do the free shipping ever. I never, ever do that because I always come out ahead charging for shipping. Again, that's a totally different issue, but we're just going to keep the 30% here. You can do a couple different discount levels at the same time. You can set up, you know, routines and things. One thing I should say, once you create this listing, this sale right here, you can just copy it and reuse it. And I'll show you that at the very end here in just a minute. 
So now you've got two options here to create a sale. I never do select the specific items. I never ever do that. Yes, you can do that. You can sort them down by category and go through item numbers and all sorts of other things as well. That, that's up to you, but I usually just create rules and go by the store category, my store category. So, and you can do up to 20,000 listings now. You used to only be able to do 10. So I'm going to pick store categories because I've got mine separated the way I know that they will sell together, that they're related items. And all you've got to do, let's pick pottery and glass. There's only a few items in here. So we'll just pick pottery and glass. Now it automatically adds every item that's in that category that you just picked into this sale and it's going to mark them all 30% off. It's giving you, uh, you know, the basics on here and what it's going to be right there. So that's that's the gist on, on what it be. Now, if you don't want to do anything under $9, I just do $9.99 up to $999.99 or $9,999 or any figure you want to add in there. So now it's going to filter out anything that doesn't fall into that aspect. And we're just going to go down here, save and review. These are really easy to, to set up, to be honest with you. The biggest factor is getting them all in there to, you know, set them all up in the right category. Now include skipped or new items when they qualify. Now I don't do this because if I list something now, I don't want it going on sale right away. And one other thing, we just put pottery or whatever else, pottery, 30%, and that's about what I put in there. This is only what you will see. No one else will, I'm sorry, 30%, $30. This is only what I will personally be able to see. Now, keep items in the sale and block revision for price increases. I don't keep that clicked either. I'm going to check that one off because if maybe I find some information out, I'd have to go in there and remove that specific listing just to be able to alter it. So I don't mess with it. And I always start them immediately. So start now. And then I'll just pick the date. Now, when I run a sale, I only run a sale for a couple days. I run a sale starting on Monday and it ends on Friday. Then when that one ends, I restart the sale that Friday and it runs till Monday. So Fridays and Mondays, I'm starting and ending a sale. Automatically, it's all set up. In between that time, when the sale ends, I do end and sell similar. And then right after that, I do uh, start all the sales over there. So that's really it. You can set the time. I usually start it now. I run it to a you know, very specific time frame. Uh, you can see if I wanted to run it, it was Friday. I'd run it through Monday the 4th. You can start it at whatever time you want. I have it where it ends early in the morning. So the minute I get up, they've already ended or there's just a couple minutes left and I can immediately go into ending and selling similar and then restarting the sale again. That's it. You can pick a, a, a title up here, and I usually use the same thing, save up to 30% off on select items, and that's it. Now, if I'm running other sales and some items are marked you know, 60% off or 40% off, I would just change it to 40%. Even though this sale right here says 30%, I do have sales going across my store that do run up to 40%. So that's not a false figure. But anyway, that's, that's the whole gist. You'd click launch and off it would go. Now, as I said, you don't have to create them but once. I created all these once and I never have to create them again. If you go down here, once it ends, you can just click copy and you can copy everything all over. Even if you've changed and relisted the items or sold them as similar and it's created a new listing, it's going by the category, so it's going to grab the same ones regardless. You can just, again, create a copy and start it all over again. It's all there is to it. It takes like 20 or 30 seconds to restart each one of these. So in like six minutes or less, I can have them all running. It happens twice a week. So maybe 15 minutes at most I spend on running this many sales. It's that easy, that quick. There's not much else to it. A large chunk of what goes on here, yeah, you can see I've already made some money off of some of these already. That's just from somebody buying it at the sale price. That's not a counter offer. That's not me sending an offer to a watcher. That's a whole other aspect. I sell a lot more because of the sale that aren't considered a sale, promotional sale, because I'm actually selling at a different price. They counter offer. I use the sale basically to get watchers. Once I get the watchers, I'll send offers to watchers. In a, in a given day, I can send 200 plus offers to watchers on a given average day. This sales and markdown, though, is the springboard that has helped us earn hundreds of thousands of dollars on eBay through this exact same method. 
One of the biggest complaints I hear from a lot of folks with running sales like this is the fact that when they list new items, they're automatically put in there. Well, you can stop them from going automatically in there. You could as well set up yourself a actual store category that says new items. And anything you just list stays in that category, new items, for two weeks, four weeks. Just never run a sale on your category that's titled new items, and you will never ever run a sale on newly listed items. Every month, every week, at the end of the week, you go and check what's in there. If you think it's been up long enough, you just change the store category to the correct category it should go into. Now, this is not going to hurt your sales. It's not going to hurt searching for your items on eBay if you put a category in your store called new items because you will still use the eBay-specific item category to describe your item. You have to use eBay's category system regardless. This is just for your store. So anybody coming to your store would immediately be able to see, oh, they got some new items. Let's go see what they got. That might be a big push for many people. That's the one way you could avoid having any issues with new items, stuff you just listed going on sale. This is hands down for vintage items, in my opinion, the best way to, to get sales out of it. The best eBay tool without a doubt. This is the one that I've used the longest for the most and that I always have running. I always do a sales markdown like this. Now, the other factor you've got to know is that if you're going to do this sort of strategy, you have to price your items higher than you would expect to get for many of the items. Not all of them, but we do a 3x on many items. I do a 2x on many items. Some items I only do a 20% increase on price. Again, it depends on the specific type of item that we're talking about. Certain weekends when there's a holiday or things like that, I run a sale on a whole bunch of items. And I'll only run them on the holiday because there'll be more chance of stuff moving. And a holiday sale, if everybody else is running one, will help you get a little boost as well. Not holiday items specifically, but like a Labor Day price blowout sale or whatever you want to call it. Now, it says promotion sales. That's not a promoted uh, uh, thing. I'm not paying eBay any promotional fees whatsoever. I'm relying on the fact that it shows as my item is on sale. And you can search for items that are on sale as well. So that'll help actually push my items to the forefront. Again, I'm selling in, in unique items, rare items, older items, vintage items. So there's not much competition. And if you don't have a lot of competition for your items, this is the best way, in my personal opinion. Again, you can't price them the price you want to get out of them and still run a sale. If you're going to run a sale, too, you have to do it at a reasonable amount. A 5% discount, a 10% discount, even a 15% discount isn't usually enough to draw enough attention to your item, unless it's a really expensive item, to get a sale out of it. The bare bones minimum sale I would ever recommend doing is 20%. Again, you can mark your, your items up 120% of what you expect to get out of them and then just simply mark them down 20%. I know that may sound weird, but perceived value is what we play by. I did this in the corporate America for, for many years as a regional manager. The perceived value is huge. It's a real thing. It works. So if someone sees a discount, even if your item is more than somebody else, they, they don't, it's usually not something that's paid attention to. Just like listing an item for $9.99 instead of $10. That $9 aspect of it is a perceived value and it does work. You will definitely get better sales pricing something $9.99 versus $10 or $29.99 versus $30. So that's the gist. That's the factors you need to understand. As long as you get this all down and you can play around with the percentages for your specific items in the specific categories they're in, you should be able to do far better and get some good, solid, repeatable results from using the sales and markdown feature on eBay. Again, this is honestly the one feature I've used since it came out that I have always used and never had any other concerns. This one feature, the sales and markdown, gets me the most sales. Now, again, there are other options you can use, coupons and all kinds of stuff like that. None of that seems to do much. This is the only one that gives us the results that it does. They're testable, they're repeatable, and I always get results doing the same routine. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
if his name is Jack, you just can't keep him in the sack. Cause Lego makes him quite a whack. It's Jack the Lego maniac. Building at the speed of light, Lego keeps him up all night. He's a pint sized dynamo, a Lego land construction pro. Jack, Jack, he's a Lego maniac. Jack, Jack, he's a Lego maniac. Lego Pirates and Castle sets, each sold separately from Lego Systems.